Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Just wanted to say welcome to the DWS Community Cafe. Um, we created this series just to give our customers the opportunity to make the most of your investment in the Dimension product suites. So we want you to look at this as to be as interactive as possible so that we can help you in your daily job really understand um, how to get the most out of um, the Dimension products. So during this series, um, the solution experts will walk you through some tips and tricks and use cases that you may not be aware of or you haven't used or you just may not be familiar with. Um, and we can really help you just try to maybe use your, um, your instance in, in just a little bit smarter way. So today's session is on dimension load test. If you have any questions during the, uh, the short presentation, please feel free to put them in the chat and we'll do our best to answer them either during the, the presentation or at the end. If you have any um, comments afterwards and you want to email myself, um, I'm Rachel Fraser from DWS and my email is rachel.fraser at dwsglobal.com. Or if you have any other topics you want to cover on any of our other products, we'd be really happy to hear from you. So with that, um, I'll pass you over to Johan van Rijk, uh, one of our solution experts here at DWS, who will walk you through Dimension Load Test. Thanks, Johan. Thanks, uh, thanks Rachel. Um, I'm very excited uh, tonight to help everybody out with some extra information about Load Test. Um, I, I compiled a little brief summary here on some slides and there's a few basics and then highlights and then some subtleties as well around the load test controller and the load test agent that I would love to just touch up on and uh, give some valuable information to, uh, to, 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 uh, to someone that might be using it out there. Right, so without further ado, let's jump in. Um, the, the session tonight is about uh, specifically about the, uh, the controller part of, of load test um, dimension suite of products and i just want to give a little brief summary about what the load test um, product is all about if you if you think about load test it's got two components uh, that that that's available there's a controller that's running on the one side and then there's an agent uh, product as well that's running on the other side and these two components can talk to each other and the, the whole purpose of it is to, to manage um, a simultaneous run, a simultaneous run of a, of a stack lot of users just using the JDE environment at the same time and using some of the E1 applications as well. The purpose of an agent as such, it's a standalone application running on a machine. And the purpose of an agent is to just spin up a lot of uh, browsers at the same time, and each browser is simulating a virtual user that's uh, that's going to be interacting with JDE. And um, of course, all of these agents are kicked off at the same time and they're started at the same point as well. Um, they're literally just waiting for the start sign from the controller. <clears throat> and then while they're busy executing, the controller is kind of monitoring the progress and just seeing what's what's going on and while the agent is busy executing this test um, against JDE it's, it's reporting back to the controller as well the whole time and just saying uh, where we are and how it's going and um, the the ultimate goal is to simulate the load of, of, of a lot of virtual users all uh, accessing JDE at the same time from different machines and interacting at the same point um, and being able to control that via the controller. Um, right, let's let's jump in. The very first part that I would like to take a look at is to do a screen breakdown of the um, agent explore screen. So the screen is inside the controller part of load test. Um, I'll be switching around between the controller and the PowerPoint um, for a few times. So just apologies for that. And the purpose of this session is just to have to go through the Agent Explore screen and just see what it can do, 
zoom in on a few of those features and just discuss some of the subtleties that that's going on there as well. So here, here we have the controller. I've already logged in for us as well and navigated to the Explore Agents screen. You'll find that that screen is available here if you go to Agents and then Explore Agents. And there's three main parts of the screen that I would like just quickly like to, to, to walk through. The first part is the inventory grid, where we have the grid of, uh, of agents showing literally just where, um, which agents is running, um, what are their statuses, are they logged in, and also to, to provide us with some functionality that we can use to, to manage them and to update them, uploading of log files, and just to see the general health. And we've also got this column here for messaging. As we're busy communicating with the agents from the controller, this column is updated with, with um, new messages uh, that's going to and fro. And then the third side of the, of the grid is consisting of this launcher management area. And I'll touch on the launcher in a little short while, but in essence, the launcher is a standalone application running alongside the agent application that's literally just there to, to stop it, start it, restart it from, from, from elsewhere. So even if you, uh, if you reach the situation where the agent becomes unresponsive or it's really, really busy running a stack load of virtual users, the launcher would still be able to reach that agent. Right, so we've got the grid showing the agents and some management um, uh, tools there to, to reach them. We've got the buttons here at the bottom as well. These buttons provide us with the functionality to, to do an action on multiple agents at the same time. So if you click this agent, that one, please stop all of them at the same time, start them or restart them. And then the third part is this little switch here at the top right which we can switch between showing enabled agents or disabled agents. And I'll touch on that on a, on a forthcoming slide as well um, in a little while. Okay, going back again to our slide here, we've done the screen breakdown, the screen breakdown. And I just quickly want to talk about the, uh, the features, the, fun the abilities we have on that screen to, to manage the agents as well. We switch back to our enabled ones. On the screen, you'll see we've got this column here that says agent management, and it's got a little health check icon there. Um, it's also got the ability to update an agent, just check for the new version that's been uploaded to the backend. Um, it's, it's important to realize that an agent is almost like a mini version of Dimension Swiftest, just running um, distributed on different machines all at the same time. So if you have a machine that's running an agent, that's almost like seeing it as a machine running a mini version of DS, of Dimension Swiftest. And then on another PC, there might be another agent. Also, uh, you can see there's a little DS there running. And um, this update would update things like the execution code and the way that that engine is interacting with JDE and going through the tests and the actions. Um, uh, as it's busy performing its load test. Also, as a bit of a background, you'll be uh, creating these tests inside Dimension Swiftest, um, exposing them by creating a queue, and in that queue, we can hook up with the load test definition inside the controller, and then that controller, you just hook up as a load test. Right, going back again to the basics of the Explore Agent screen, we've got the agent management functionalities, ability to check their health, Check for updates, please upload some log files um, if we wanted to see how the execution went and um, any more technical kind of uh, side of things. We can get our hands on that log file. It zips all the text files, upload it to the Azure backend, and from there on we can access it. We also got the ability to disable agents um, on that screen as uh, on this column. Then moving on to the next screen, we've also got the launcher management area on the controller. Launcher management is this guy here on the right hand side where it's, remember it's that standalone application that uh, gives you the ability to, 
to stop and start and restart this agent, no matter what it's busy doing. Um, it'll be sending a, a, a command uh, over, H, over the internet, over HTTP, to the machine where the agent is running. That separate launcher application is listening the whole time for uh, commands from the controller. And as soon as it receives something, it'll um, kick off the process to uh, literally to do the action on the agent. It could be stop the agent, which would literally kill the EXE of the agent, start the agent. It would start the agent again using the same locked in credentials that was previously used, or you can just kick off a restart, which is literally just a combination of stopping and starting the agent. You've also got this little guy here on the right to just check if the launcher is running, if the launcher is healthy and uh, ready, for, ready to be interacted with. That's, that's covering the basics of what's available on the Agent Explore screen. Remember that is the screen here, Explore Agents. We've covered the areas and the main functionalities that, that you can use on the screen. I now want to just focus briefly on some of the highlights of these basic functionalities. And the very first thing is the health check. But now I'm going to switch back again to the controller. And remember the health check we mentioned where this little guy here, the refresh icon, there's quite a lot happening in there. And when you click on refreshing of, uh, refresh the agent, it's doing two kinds of things. It's doing a listening check and it's doing a connected check, right? The listening check does a few things on its own. You can see that almost as, as a test of uh, if we are able to communicate with the agent. Can we reach the agent? We're not going to try to see uh, what it can do or if it can reach uh, all of the different things we need it to, to be able to reach. We just want to see if we can send a message to it and if it can reply to us. That's also using Azure on the back end to, uh, for the messaging plumbing. And it, 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 uh, if we click on it here, you'll see that it's sending the message to the agent. The uh, message column is giving us feedback on how the messaging is going as well. And Im immediately the agent has come back to us to say, yeah, this is the user that I've logged in as. This is the Windows user that this EXE has been run as. And this is my version number. So you can always confirm if you're, up, if you're using the latest version or not. The status column is also very important. If the agent was busy uh, with doing a load test, it would say you're busy executing or uh, downloading an update or uploading log files. Listening is literally that point to say it's idle. It's waiting for a command to start a load test. Um, it's, it's ready for action, to put it like that. So that's our listening column. We can communicate. The second column is the connected one, which is a bit more involved, and it's checking if this agent on that remote machine is able to reach our infrastructure that's necessary to execute tests as we configure it in Dimension Swiftest. It needs two main areas. It needs to be able to reach our authentication server so it can log in, and also our web API uh, services layer, which it needs to be able to access the database and all of the business logic uh, that, that it needs to, to, to iterate through the actions in the test and the tests in the queue. Also, as a little side note there, it does a time check. And the time check just compares the time on the agent with the time on the web API services. And we'll need that when you go through the execution results uh, after, watch, after executing a load test and seeing things like the duration and, and things like that. But that's in a nutshell the health check, this little guy here, refresh status, covering listening and connected. Moving on, we've also got um, another highlight of the basic functionality available on the Agent Explore screen, we've got the updates. Now, there are two kind of updates available. We've got an update for a new version, and we've got an update for a new browser. And the, these, two are, these two can be um, checked independently from each other. A new version is, like I mentioned a little bit earlier, it's, it's a new version of the execution code of the actual uh, of, the, of the agent and when executing the load, executing the test. But um, also, you spin up a browser when you try to interact with JDE, and that browser is um, using something, uh, a Chrome driver. You're using Chrome driver to, to simulate the Chrome browser and also Edge. And this checking for the new browser literally just makes sure 
am I using the latest Chrome driver available? Um, so it will be more efficient and faster and, um, uh, and literally using the latest version of that. We're keeping uh, track of that and uploading the new Chrome drivers onto Azure. And then the agent is checking that repo uh, behind the scenes as it becomes available. So to check for an uh, agent update, literally click this uh, icon here. It will send the command through to the agent. The agent would uh, receive the command uh, and connect to Azure, see if there's a new version that we uh, released. Um, and literally start the process of updating the agent, which involves stopping the agent, downloading the update, applying the update that set up the DXE, and then restarting the agent again using those credentials that the agent was previously logged in as. All the while, it will communicate back and cite this last message column, just saying what exactly is happening at that moment. And it, it provides a nice, easy way, elegant way to, to be able to update all of your agents uh, remotely from the screen. You don't have to uh, remote desktop, you don't have to connect to those machines manually, uninstall, install the setup exe. You literally just need to press this button to update the agents and they'll be up and running with the latest version. Um, checking for the latest browser doesn't require a new version of the agent and it is part of the health check. When you do the health check, the agent sends back its details and it's also checking if there's a new version of the browser of the browser available. It downloads that automatically, and it's ready to be used for the next execution of the load test. Moving on to another highlight of the Agent Explore screen, it'd be the status. And an agent can have three different kinds of statuses that I just quickly want to talk through. Uh, we have this enabled state of, of agents, which means it's ready to be used, to be included in load test definitions, in agent pools, and um, it's also going to be uh, 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 going to be included when you start executing a load test. They should check to make sure that all the agents forming part of this load test is marked as enabled. And if it finds one in that load test definition that's not enabled, it will actually bring up a warning to say, are you sure you want to proceed with this load test? The scenario where you would like to disable a load uh, disable an agent would be, for example, you're busy troubleshooting a network configuration on the machine hosting that agent, and you still want it to be available inside your library of agents, but just not uh, available yet to be included for execution purposes. It's almost like having it on standby, and you can switch around between you can switch around between these two very easily. Let me mark this guy as disabled, for example, and it's still available. You can still go there removes from the screen, go back here, and it's available here now. And you can just mark it again as enabled, which would take it back again to the enabled screen. Um, the, some of the other screens inside the controller where you're creating a task for a load test, for example, shows you a brief summary of the agents available. If an agent is marked as disabled, it won't appear in some of these dropdowns. It'll literally only show you the guys that's ready for action. So it gives you a bit of a more control which ones to make available in your library and which ones you want to just keep for future for future reference and for future sake. If you're sure you're not going to be using a machine anymore for, uh, for to be used as an agent, you can go ahead and you can delete that agent machine from the library entirely. Uh, deleting this uh, doesn't really have a point to undo and you'll have to literally contact support to undo that, um, to, to undo that action. Moving on, we went through the basics of the Agent Explore screen. We went through some highlights of the of functionalities and areas available. Now for some subtleties uh, on the screen that's also um, interesting to know about. Um, as part of the health check, let's go back here. As part of the health check, you'll see this little icon here, power icon, that's either green or red, and this, is green when both of these guys are green. The listening and the connected is green. So in that co combination or true, it means that we can communicate with the agent and the agent got everything it needs to execute a load test successfully. And when those two are combined, we have an uh, online agent. You might have the scenario where the agent can be reached to communicate with, but you couldn't reach the web API or the authentication service. 
which means we've got only one of the two legs up and running and that would come back as an offline agent. Once again, on the rest of the uh, controller, when executing a load test, a little warning would come up to say, are you sure you want to include this agent as part of your load test? Um, our current status is indicating it as being offline. Also, in creating a load, uh, a load test definition or an agent pool, it would filter the online agents first and then later on the offline agents. Another little subtlety here is when you, um, okay, let's talk about the launcher first. It's a separate application, like I mentioned. It communicates independently on its own. It, you can manage the launcher, you can manage the agent. The whole purpose of the launcher being to control the agent. Another little subtlety here is that when you click here and you say refresh agents, it does a health check on all of the agents uh, from the start again without you having to go and click on each little row uh, by itself. And it only does 10 agents at a time. And the reason we, we introduced that limitation was if this machine is running, if this controller is running on a machine that's maybe doing some other things as well, this could be quite resource intensive if there's, you know, 100 agents being registered and being pinged and being health checked all at the same time here, and the messaging being sent to and fro. So it will iterate, it will go through the list of agents doing the health check 10 at a time, just to make it a bit more manageable. What happens when you do a health check while, it's, while the agent is still busy executing? Um, it will literally come back with, the agent, with a message to say, hang on, um, my status is busy executing, and the message would say, please try to do the health check again um, later on when the load test has finished. Then, that's about it. That's about what I've got available for us at this session. Um, just a footnote: if we've got uh, we've got our, our archive here with more information on all of the products and all of our all of our links here. If you need to to make contact, that's great. Thanks, Johan. Yeah. So if you want to go through the. I think just to see if we've got any questions from anybody on. Um, I'll just check and. Um, I think we're okay just in terms of the uh, questions. I think you've covered everything really well uh, in that presentation. So um, I think if we've got nothing else with the chat, then um, I think we can just sign off. As I said, there's always um, an email. You can email us on the slide there, sales at dwsglobal.com or email myself. And I just really thank everybody for joining us today and hope you find this session useful. Thanks again, Johan. <laughs> Thank you so much, Rachel. It was a privilege. Thanks. Really enjoyed it. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.